Hi guys and welcome back, hope you're all well. So in this video I'm going to be doing a project that's been on my mind for a while. It was last winter, I went away for a few nights and the uh, got very cold and the tanks underneath the van froze. Uh, so did the pipes and so that put the end to that little breakaway and um, the uh, outlet valve from the waste tank actually uh, split and so I had to repair that and so it's something I needed to get done. So the way I decided to go about solving this problem was using heater pads. So in this video, I'm going to uh, show you exactly how I fitted them all, uh, go through the wiring in detail and uh, show you how it all works. So I hope it comes in useful and uh, okay, see you soon. These are the pads I'm gonna be fitting, the Facon, Tank heater pad CWT1218. So I've got two of these. And I've just been extending the uh, wiring on them. So they come with this uh, peel off backing. So this is the sticky side that goes onto the underside of the tank. And they come with uh, insulation instructions and an owner's manual as well. So I need to fit the heater pads as close as possible to the inlets and the outlets. But this section at the front of the bracket here, where the outlet is from this, the first one here, the, the closest one is the fresh water tank, and the furthest one is the waste. So I need to get uh, that heater pad as close as possible to the outlet which is over there but that section's not big enough so it's going to have to go in here but the brackets are a little bit too close together because the pad's 18 inches long and so this far bracket here I've just slacked my nuts off and moved it back a little bit as you can see the far, comparing it with the far bracket just moved back half an inch, three quarters of an inch, which will allow the pad to sit in there. So the first thing I did uh, was take the fridge out, which uh, only just fits down this passageway by a few millimetres. And uh, the reason was, was to get to these two wires here. Uh, when I built the van, I had a spare fuse on my main fuse board. So I ran these two wires down there. Uh, just in case I needed them later on, a bit of future proofing for you. And so I'm going to uh, connect a mini fuse board at the other side of this panel. And I'm going to put uh, two rocker switches on here somewhere. And I'm going to connect the uh, heater pads up individually. Uh, if one ever goes wrong in the future and starts blowing a fuse, I'll know which one it is rather than just connecting them all into one fuse and then me not knowing which one it is. So in the bottom here I've drilled a hole underneath where the fridge goes. That's a 20 millimeter hole that goes right down through the bottom of the van and I'm going to bring up uh, some trunking and run the wiring up the hole and underneath here, come out at the back and through up into the fuse board. And uh, these two wires will power the fuse board. And then uh, from the fuse board, we'll go out to the switches and then back down to the pads. So I've been fortunate enough to be able to lend somebody's pit in their uh, service station, their garage. It's going to make this job so much easier. And uh, it's a Sunday, it's absolutely freezing, it's December, but it's a little bit warmer inside here. So I'm going to get cracking. So the first thing I did was clean the tanks with some rubbing alcohol and a rag. And then because I'd moved the brackets out slightly, I used some uh, adhesive mastic and uh, just put a bead of that down there just to keep them in position. And then it was time to stick the first pad on. 
these went on quite well you just uh, peel the backing tape off and they stick up it's quite a strong adhesive I just gave it a little uh, rub after just to make sure it stayed in place and uh, I also decided to insulate the tanks so to do this I used some of the double bubble wrap the stuff that you would use for making the vapor barrier when you're building your van and also using the high temperature adhesive that you would use when you were doing your carpeting so it was a bit of a nightmare the uh, it was like wrapping a huge christmas present but uh, there were so many things in the way the uh, the beams the uh, cross members underneath the van were in the way the pipes coming out of the tanks and all these things so it was a bit of a struggle and took a lot longer than i thought So that's the first tank done so it's been a lot trickier than i thought there's a lot of things in the way the beams underneath the van the pipes coming out of the tank and other things but uh, i've got most of it cable tied it as well with some extra long cable ties so we'll get on with the next one now so that's the second one done I've not been able to get it in every single spot. There's just too much uh, going off with the chassis and things, but uh, I want to set about lagging all these pipes. I've got done what I can there with the pipe lagging. I can't get to every little bit of it. This one up there is from the kitchen sink, but I can't get up there. I've tried. I've got round this way. And this is the filling point and exit point for the wastewater. It's all lagged. So I think I'm going to put some black underseal paint on uh, on the tanks so it'll not uh, resemble the uh, space station anymore. I've got two wires hanging down now from the heated pads, which I've already extended. 
on the hole, where they're going to go through is up there. So now I'm going to put some trunking around these and uh, fasten it up. There we go. So the wire from the wastewater tank comes out here, put a short piece of trunk in and then run both wires together up there and throw up into the van. So I'm back at home now and it's the next morning and uh, I'm going to put the new fuse board in position up here. It's the only place it'll really go and this will provide uh, the power to the pads. Here I'm drilling two holes, one at the top of the uh, new fuse board and one at the bottom. These are for the 6mm cables to come through and to connect onto the main terminals of the new fuse board. <laughs> So that's the fuse board in position with the life coming in at the top and the neutral coming in at the bottom. So now I'm going to go around to where we fed the cables through the bottom of the van yesterday and get them through into position. So you can see the trunking coming up into the van with the two wires coming out. And I'm going to feed those two wires now underneath this boarding up the back and through into here so i've got the wires through now under the board around the back and through into here and uh, i've cut two holes in this panel using the multi-tool and fed the wires through there and i'm going to uh, connect all these wires up to uh, these rocker switches they're the three prong type and these are going to turn the tank tanks on and off so uh, when I was in the pit yesterday I put a bit of tape around this wire uh, so that I knew which one was which and this is the one that feeds the fresh water tank so now I'm going to run some wires through from the new fuse board and through these holes and then uh, we can connect up to the rocker switches so that's that wired up and I've just put a fuse, a 10 amp fuse in the new little uh, fuse board we've fitted. So the top connection is the live coming from uh, the new fuse board. The centre connection is a switch live going out and the two neutrals are joined together. So we have power down to the pad now hopefully and that should slot in there 
excellent. So I'll do the next one now. So that's it, they're both in. I'll get them labelled up properly so I know which one's which. So we've got two working switches. One for fresh water tank and one for the waste water tank. So just to recap on the wiring. From the main fuse board, this wire here is a six millimeter cable and uh, comes out the neutrals down here. That wire runs along here and up into the new fuse board. So that powers the new fuse board. And then the top cable via this 10 amp fuse comes out and goes into the fresh water tank switch. It goes onto the permanent line of the switch and that which is the top connection and then the center connection the switch live comes out and goes down to the heater pad and so they both uh, fuse separately so yeah job done also while i'm down here and i've got the fridge out and the new fuse board there i'm going to fit this uh, 12 volt power socket down here i've already got one at that side you can't have too many and well i've got the opportunity i'm going to put that in there so there we go that's fitted now and so using three points off the new fuse board and we've got power down this side of the garage very good so as you can see it was quite a job and without the help of that pit at the service station it would have been far more difficult wouldn't have been too bad if i weren't uh, insulating the tanks but i think it's uh, better to do it that way if you can and uh, anyway i hope uh, it's come in useful and please subscribe if you've not already done so okay take care bye